All right, hello and welcome. Pastor John here, and um, I'm continuing our uh, journey along the prophets. And today we're going to be looking at the book of Jeremiah. So I invite you to open your Bible, <clears throat> turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 to 14. So please open your Bible, turn to Jeremiah. Chapter 29, verses 11 to 14. <clears throat> and we read. <clears throat> for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. God bless the reading of this word. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven to 14. God knows and cares. God knows and cares. So a little bit of background here. <clears throat> We're um, talking about uh, dealing with Jeremiah, who was a prophet. Um, act of around 627 to 585 BC. And uh, what happens with um, here in the, um, uh, the times of Jeremiah is that God announces judgment against Judah. God announces judgment against Judah, but also, um, but it also, God also reveals his care for his people once they turn back to him, right? So as they turn away from idols and worshiping false gods and deities turning back to him uh, he promises uh, his care and restoration of his people that's a big one so <clears throat> jeremiah is um, warning the israelites repeatedly of god's judgment repeatedly over and over and over again um, god is um, warning um, the hebrew people the israelites at the time of god's judgment and the people, people are not listening. Why are the people not listening to God's spokesperson and uh, to God speaking through Jeremiah? So uh, the context here is um, found in um, Jeremiah 28, where and that's the pre preceding chapter, <clears throat> where we're dealing there with false prophets. So as you read through the entire book of Jeremiah, you will see repeatedly over and over again, uh, those are false prophets. They're not sent from God, right? They're uh, of the devil, right? Satan is influencing them and, and telling them what, you know, what tickles people's ears. Um, just not the truth. In other words, everything's fine. Uh, just continue on with your life. And they keep on worshiping false uh, prophets everything but uh, they worship everything but our lord god <clears throat> so the people don't listen and what happens then is that they are exiled the israelites are then exiled to babylon in 586 bc and that's unfortunate but that's the outcome so the topic here is for us is that god knows and cares <clears throat> god knows and cares um, God announces judgment and judges, um, but God is also merciful, and he promises hope uh, despite the exile. So God's plan here is <clears throat> welfare, not evil for the exiles. So God knows the people's situation, and uh, he's responding to their prayers here. And so in verse 13, <clears throat> big one, uh, when it says wholeheartedly, this is the amazing promise of our loving God, um, <clears throat> which is, uh, we, we, read, we see it too, as Jesus reminds us in John 6, 37. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. God bless you, Amos word. So <clears throat> then in verse 14, um, af after 70 years in exile, um, God promises to release the captives from the exile. Seventy years of, in exile, 
And there is God's promise that he's going to release the Kappas from the exile. And <clears throat> there's another one. Um, there's a new covenant he is then going to establish through Jesus Christ, which is also fulfilled, which is the um, <clears throat> which is David's um, righteous branch, the righteous branch in David. So in um, Jeremiah 23, verse 5, we read about this. Uh, For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant <clears throat> from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. So we have a promisey, pro, uh, prophecy here. And uh, of course, this is our Lord Jesus Christ. And even though this applies to the um, Israelites at that time, um, this verse we just read, uh, highlighted, I w it's one of, uh, well, it's one of my favorite verses in, in the Bible. And that promise does not apply only to the Israelites at that time. Um, <clears throat> the passage we read, our, our uh, passage for, for Jeremiah, um, but also to us. So let's explore that a little bit further. So what does it mean for you that God, namely our Lord Jesus Christ, knows and cares? So it means that God's word never fails. God's word never fails. In the Bible, we have Christ's promise. <clears throat> Jesus Christ's own promise. We read in Hebrews 10, chapter 10, verses 19 to 22, which is a call, basically a call to persevere. So in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 22. And so, dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. God bless you in his word. Wow, what a, what a promise and blessing. <clears throat> also, God's promise never fails. When God says something will be so, it will be so. So his promise never fails. And so we read in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. <clears throat> Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. God bless the universe word. So God's faithfulness, uh, when he says his covenant lasts, uh, keeps it for a thousand generations, in other words, eternally, for eternity. All right, so um, big one, so... We want to embrace his unfailing love and obey his commands, right, to start. And God calls us to himself, just as it is with Jeremiah here. God calls us to himself. And Jesus reminds us, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. John ten fourteen. And in John 10, 27 to 28, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. God bless you, my sword. So we have God's promise here. God knows and cares. Jesus Christ is our Lord. May God bless you and keep you.